I'm sort of stealing this idea from Jaden Animations. Wait, no, that's not right. I'm not stealing it. I'm plagiarizing it. Jaden did a video talking about random thoughts she had and you should all go watch it. And I thought, hey, I think randomly sometimes. So Jaden, is it all right if I make a video about my random thoughts? I hope you say yes, because I just did. What is happiness? Well, it's a chemical in your brain. And how do you get that chemical? Well, it's just a little something I like to call drugs. I think humans make fun of hairless animals way too much. We think that all hairless animals are ugly. Just go to Google Images and type in hairless animal and you'll probably think the animals you see there are ugly as well. But we all seem to forget that we're hairless animals too. If anything, other animals should think that we're ugly. So I look at this phenomenon and I have a theory. I think we humans find things covered in hair more cute. We're more attracted to things covered in hair. And that's why I'm a furry. My dad never taught me how to shave, and one time I cut myself shaving right above my lip, and for the rest of the day, all I could smell was blood. I don't know why I mentioned the dad part. You know how websites will ask you to type in a bunch of misshapen letters to make sure you're not a robot? That's called a CAPTCHA. And some of those CAPTCHAs are impossible. Sometimes I look at a CAPTCHA and think, Am I a robot? I just wanted to send some email. I didn't want to question my identity. I wasn't ready for an existential crisis club, Penguin. Sorry, that joke is dead. Just like Club Penguin. So here's the random thought. What if we lived in a robot society and robots had to prove that they weren't human to make a Facebook account? I think their CAPTCHA would be an optical illusion. Like to sign into a website, it'll show two lines and say, prove you're not a human, which line is bigger? Optical illusions are like CAPTCHAs for people. Every time you paint a room, it gets a little bit smaller. And if it takes you one can of paint to paint an entire room, then the room gets smaller by one can of paint. You brought a can of paint inside the room and you never took it out. Every time you smell something, molecules from that thing get sucked up into your nose and that's how you're able to smell it. So that means every time you smell something, it gets a tiny bit lighter. Do archeologists have lingo and jokes that only other archeologists will understand? Like there's a whole other world of jokes that I won't get to experience because I'm not an archeologist. Like one day two archeologists could be digging a hole and one says, I'm not finding anything. And then the other guy says, well, you know what they say in the archeology span business. And I don't know what they say because I'm not an archeologist. How about we look up jokes for archeologists? Why did Robin Hood pull out of the archery contest? He found it an arrowing experience. Okay, get that one, it just wasn't that funny. Nor was it about archeology. span Or maybe it was and I just don't get it. We'll never know. Where did Caesar keep his armies? Up his sleeveys. Okay, I had to get this one explained to me, but armies is supposed to be your arm, like your body arm, and your armies go up your sleeveys. Get it? Except Julius Caesar wore a toga, so he didn't even have sleeves. And you could just say this about anyone who had an army. Where did Hitler keep his armies? Up his sleeveys, ha 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 When you ask someone what time it is, sometimes they'll say, it's a quarter to blank. And first off, I really hate that way of telling time, because now I have to use math just to know what time it is. Someone will say, it's a quarter to eight. Okay, so a quarter to eight, well, a quarter is 25, so eight minus 25, it's like negative 13. Wait, no, we're using time numbers, so a quarter of 60, that's like 10 minutes, so eight minus 60 over four, you carry the two and... Oh, it's eight o'clock now. We usually only say it's a quarter to when referring to whole numbers, but I wish people would use other times, like, hey, what time is it? Oh, it's a quarter to 837. Did you know that mosquitoes prefer type O blood more than any other blood type? Does that mean our blood tastes different? How can mosquitoes sense what blood type we are? Do mosquitoes think we come in different flavors? What if there was a restaurant for mosquitoes and the menus just had our blood types? Are there mosquito snobs? Like one mosquito would say, oh, I see you're drinking O negative. Hmm. Of course you'd like that blood. Everyone likes that blood. I got that whole idea from a conversation I had with Jaden and I said I was gonna use it in my random thoughts video, so I'm just stealing everything from Jaden. You know what I think would be a funny contradiction? A fedora with a Tumblr logo on it. Whenever you leave for a trip, people will say, drive safe, which is fine. I always appreciate safe driving tips, but when you go flying in an airplane, sometimes people will say, have a safe flight, but I literally have no control if a plane flies safely or not. Why are you telling me to fly safe? I should be the one telling the pilot that. Hey, I just wanted to say that a lot of my friends are counting on you, so you better not screw this up. I appreciate the sentiment, but how do I fly unsafe? Maybe go on my phone before we take off, not watch the safety video? Blow the plane up? Why do people care so much about fashion? If I bought some really nice clothes and I go to a party, out of everyone in that room, I'm the only one who can't see what I'm wearing. Unless I look down the entire time. 
I can go to a party and be wearing just a bunch of clown makeup, and as long as there's no mirrors around and everyone plays it cool, I would have no idea that I'm wearing anything. And also, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing because I look good in everything. I think this whole YouTube thing has given me a confidence boost. I wouldn't say it's an unhealthy amount, but it's given me confidence that I didn't have in high school. My parents bought me a Pokemon shirt for Christmas, and yeah, I like Pokemon, but I don't want the whole world to know that. And in high school, I wouldn't have worn any remotely geeky shirt. But now I can go outside and not even realize that I'm wearing my Pokemon shirt. And when I do realize, I usually think, huh, that's embarrassing. Ah, I'm the odd ones out, who cares? When my parents were my age, they already had a child. And here I am, wearing a Pokemon shirt. You know how different states in America will have different names for certain things? Like some states call it pop instead of soda, or how they call it a washroom instead of a bathroom, and apparently in Rhode Island they call a water fountain a bubbler, and everywhere else is just normal? Anyway, once I heard that down south, there is a phrase for when it's raining and the sun is still out. And that phrase is, the devil meeting his wife. Oh, isn't that so sweet? That means anyone can find happiness, even the devil. Ah, I love it when we give the devil more innocent and human characteristics. And given how few of times it rains in Arizona, I don't get to use that phrase very often. So already when it's raining, it's like, Woo, it's raining, this day is gonna be great. But then when the sun's out, I get to say, look guys, the devil's meaning his wife. Ah, I hope they're happy together. Unfortunately, I misheard what that phrase was when I learned it. It's not the devil meeting his wife, it's actually the devil beating his wife. So I guess they're not happy together. I was so sad when I learned what it actually was. I don't know who this devil's wife is, but you need to find a new man, dude. And to think, I almost thought of you as an all right guy, Satan. I looked up that saying on Wikipedia, and in Tennessee they say, the devil is kissing his wife. So I guess in Tennessee, the devil's romantic, but everywhere else he just can't stand her. And the worst variation I could find has to be what they say in France. In France, when it rains and the sun's out, they say, the devil is beating his wife and marrying his daughter. Whoa, France, I'd expect that sort of behavior from Tennessee, but not you, France. Why do you have to be so dramatic to describe your weather? I don't wanna even know what you call snowstorms. So anyway, those were my random thoughts. I swear I don't do drugs.